Today we'll be deploying a Next.js 15 project using Vercel with the Postgres database. We'll be using Prisma as our ORM and talk about how to query the database to confirm if we have any items that we can display within our user interface. If you're looking for a quick starter project on how you can get a web app on the internet as quick as possible using Next.js and Vercel, this is the perfect video for you. All you need is the latest version of Node installed on your machine to get started. So with that said, let's jump into code. Now let's integrate a database in our application. There are several options we could choose from. For this project, we'll be using Vercel. The reason is, it's extremely simple to deploy a Next.js app. There's a free tier available for use, and it also easily integrates file storage when we're ready to add images. So from the Vercel storage dashboard, click on the storage tab, then click create database. Select Neon Serverless Postgres. You'll choose the region that's closest to you. By default, the free tier should be selected, then click continue. Feel free to name your database whatever you like. Once it's created, you'll be redirected to a screen where we'll have a connection string. This is how we'll connect to the remote database. We'll want to copy the variables under the .env.local. Eventually, we'll be adding this to our project. We're going to have a .env.local file, which will be ignored so it's not exposed to the front end code or available on our GitHub repo. If for some reason it became available, someone will have full access to our database. We're going to keep it safe by storing it server side in an environment variable. So head back to VS Code and in the root directory, click on the .getignore file. Let's add .env.local to ensure it's ignored in the GitHub repo. Let's save this file. Then also in the root directory, let's add the .env.local file. We can paste in the code that we just copied from Vercel. We're going to remove the additional code not related to our database. Next, we'll set up and pass this off to Prisma to do something a little more useful in the project. Instead of writing raw SQL, we'll do something much simpler like using Prisma. Prisma, we can easily make migrations when the schema needs to be changed. Additionally, models are easy to read and work with. It also generates the Prisma client, which is going to allow us to access our database using JavaScript IntelliSense. So in the terminal, let's run the command npm i dash d prisma. Also npm i at prisma client. Finally, we'll initialize prisma by typing npx prisma init. This command is going to generate a directory named prisma along with the schema.prisma file. If you open the file, you'll notice it's pointed to the database URL we set up in the previous section. We'll want to make sure these variables matches the variable name inside of the .env.local file. We'll need to update the data source db object with the direct URL as you see on screen. Later on, we'll make changes to this schema file as we add more attributes to the post. Now that we define the schema, we want to apply it to the database. We could do that by running npx prisma migrate dev. This command is going to do two things. First, it'll sync the model with the Vercel database. It'll also generate the Prisma client. The client is a JavaScript library generated to help us with our data. Now you may have received the error when you typed in this command. This is because the Prisma init actually generated a .env file for us. To correct this, just copy the information from the .env.local file, paste it into the .env file. Now if we rerun NPS Prisma Migrate Dev, we should now sync our model to the Vercel database and also generate the Prisma client. To confirm the migrations, we'll utilize Prisma Studio, which is a lightweight client interface that allows us to interact with our database without having to use Vercel. So in the terminal, type in the command NPX Prisma Studio. The interface will launch on our localhost 555. From here, we can see the post model with the properties ID, title, and content. Now to utilize the Prisma client throughout the application, we need to create a Prisma function. Now back in the root of the project, let's create a folder named lib and a file named prisma.ts. Ultimately within this file, we want to export a function named prisma. That's going to utilize the prisma client, initialize it, and export this variable so that we can use it throughout the project. Go ahead and copy in this information and save the file. Now we're ready to test the connection between Vercel database and our Next.js project. In the page.tsx file, let's begin by importing the prisma function that we just created in our lib directory. We'll also bring in link from next navigation. Create an export default function named home and we'll go ahead and make this an asynchronous function. Now within the function, we'll start by creating a variable named post and we'll await our connection to Prisma. We'll use the post model and the find mini method from Prisma to collect all of the posts within our database. We'll include a return statement and within it we'll have a div. Within the div, we're going to use JavaScript to do some conditional rendering. In the event that the post.length is above zero, we're going to map over and display each post. For each post, we'll be sure to indicate the key and we'll also display the post title on screen. In the event we don't have any posts, we're going to return a message to the user indicating that no posts are available. Now, if you go ahead and start your server back on your local host, head to localhost 3000, you should see that we currently get no posts are available on screen. Now, within the Prisma Studio, we have the ability to add a record. Let's go ahead and test out this connection by adding a record. I've added a test title and test content to the post within our database. 
If we refresh our local host, we see that we now have the test title on screen. So this confirms our connection to our Postgres database using Next.js with Prisma as our ORM. Now, if we wanted to upload our project to the internet, we could do so easily by using Vercel. Let's start by creating a GitHub repo with our project. So if you're using VS Code, click on Source Control. We'll type in Update and click Commit. We'll be asked to publish this branch. From there, it will create a name of this repo and we can select whether we'd like to have it public or private. Once it's successfully published, let's go into our root directory, click on the .env file and copy the content within it. We'll head back to Vercel and click on Overview. From the Overview window, we'll click on Add New and we'll be adding a project. Under the Git repo, let's import the most recent repo that we just created. We'll see the name of our project, the framework is Next.js, and then under Environment Variables, let's go ahead and click on the accordion, paste in the content inside of the key, then we'll click on Deploy. Now you're probably receiving this particular error. So if we explore the build logs, we see that we got a Prisma client initialization error. So let's go back to VS Code and within the package.json inside of scripts, we're going to paste in the command post install Prisma generate. We'll go back to source control, or we'll type in update and click commit. Be sure to sync the changes. Now, if we go back to Vercel, you'll notice that we now have a deployment status of ready. We attempt to redeploy the project. And if we click visit, we're redirected to the home page of our production website. We have the test title on the screen the same way we did during development.